Well, I think it's time for another ghostly tale from haunted South Wales, and in particular from Scare and Scare House. While the bleak windswept scare point can feel very isolated, especially as the sun goes down. Even today, in the 21st century, with all its distractions, scare and the surrounding dunes can make you feel cut off from the modern world. It's like you've been transported back in time a few hundred years. Well, in previous videos, I've talked about the old myths and legends about Scare and Scare Point. The ghosts of the Maid of Scare, wandering the dunes looking for her lost love. Ghosts of sailors lured into the rocks by wreckers, and the evil cries from the dunes and the floating ghost lights, both premonitions of a person's death. Well, one ghost I haven't mentioned before is a ghost of a priest who was meant to walk the halls and rooms of Scare House. A priest who was hunted down and horrifically executed. However, this story is slightly different from the other folk stories I've told you because the events leading up to his death actually happened and they form part of South Wales's dark history. So, for this story, let me take you back to the winter of 1678. At this time, the house was owned by the Turbeville family, who were staunch Catholics. And despite there being still a strong anti-Catholic sentiment in England and Wales, Scare House was used as a refuge for priests and clandestine Catholic services. The family thought the remoteness of the house would help protect them from neighbouring informers. They say Scare House has a priest hole, a place where the Catholic priest could secretly hide when the building was being searched. To add to this anti-Catholic feeling, there was the Popish plot of 1678, a completely fictitious plot, but it was put around that the Jesuits were planning to assassinate King Charles II and put his Roman Catholic brother on the throne. So let's get back to our story about conspiracy and betrayal. One of the priests on the wanted list following the fake plot to kill the king was Philip Evans. John Arnold of Monmouthshire, an extreme anti-Catholic, offered a reward of 200 pound, which is about 30,000 pounds in today's money for Philip Evans' arrest. So Evans sought refuge in Scare House, which was now owned by Christopher Turbeville. However, Christopher Turbeville had a younger brother, Edward, who despite coming from a Catholic family, was all too willing to hunt priests for money, using his inside knowledge of the Catholic community in South Wales. And family loyalty was no part of Edward Turbeville's character. Well, on the night of the 4th of December, 1678, a posse led by Edward Turbeville rode up to Scare House to arrest Philip Evans. He didn't care that his brother could suffer the death penalty for harbouring a priest. Edward Turberville just wanted the money. While well, Evans was dragged from Scare House and put in jail in Cardiff, he was later joined by another priest, John Lloyd. They were put on trial for high treason in Cardiff in May 1679 and both found guilty. And their sentence for high treason? To be hanged, drawn, and quartered. The executions took place in Cardiff in July 1679, with Evans being the first to die. Plaques mark the site of the executions, which can be found at the junction of Cruis Road and Richmond Road. The area is still known as Death Junction. So don't be surprised if you're walking past Scare House on a murky winter's evening and you spot a shadowy figure of a priest walking the grounds. 
it's probably just a sinister echo from the dark days of Scarehouse.